Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. Nos programs offer plusieurs langues. Veuillez visiter suprememastertv.com bar oblique schedule. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Visiten suprememastertv.com bar inclinada schedule. Nasite predavania predlagat mnogo ezici. Mole vishte suprememastertv.com na kone na črta schedule. Victory to you, daring deeds, for the mighty winged deeds outweigh all wrongdoing. Lord, grant me to cast into the flames the deceptive rags of the ordinary. I shall not err in realizing that winged daring has thy blessing. Please continue watching for the messages from the venerated master Moria, as recorded by his disciples Nicholas and Helena Riorich, vegetarians. Bona ziwa. This is how the welcoming Moldovan citizens would greet you with hello in Romanian, the official language of the country. Shining viewers, my name is Evelina. The people of vibrant Moldova wish you and yours to rejoice in peaceful, loving and light-filled surroundings. May God be your guiding star. Welcome to Yoga, the Supreme Bridge to Cosmic Attainment from Agni Yoga by Nicholas and Helena Rorick, Vegetarians, Part 2 of 2 on Words of Wisdom. The esteemed mystical and philosophical writers Nicholas and Helena Rorick are two of the most influential spiritual thought leaders from Russia recognized for founding the doctrine of Agni Yoga also known as living ethics, believed to be a synthesis of all yogas, spiritual disciplines. Agni Yoga focuses on the daily practice of love, beauty and noble action. Nicholas Roerich was also a highly esteemed artist whose illuminating paintings, charged with the energy of his mystical experiences, drew many pilgrims from around the world. His wife, Helena Roerich, was the incentive for his interest in Eastern spirituality and theosophy. She is depicted in his painting titled She Who Leads. Traveling extensively throughout Asia to deepen their spiritual studies, the Roeriks eventually met their master in Darjeeling, India. The ascended venerated Master Maurya also known as El Moria, is a master of the Great White Brotherhood, an order of ascended masters and their incarnated disciples, one of whom was Helena Blavatsky. In fact, Master Moria inspired the founding of the Theosophical Society, and to the Roeriks he was the inspiration behind all of their noble ideals for the world. Moria revealed messages of higher wisdom to Nicholas and Helena Roerich, which they recorded on paper and later gathered into a series of texts. We will now continue with a selection of the advanced teaching and wisdom of Master Moria from the book Agni Yoga from 1929, as recorded by his disciples Helena and Nicholas Roerich. The excerpt gives a vision for an inner transformation toward being the courageous and daring ones at this very significant time in our history. Preface When alone, spurning possessions, standing firm and unperturbed, not bewailing his fate, only then does the daring one exult. Thus shall we begin the translation of our ancient book of daring. When a child plays with a newborn kitten, his mother rejoices at his courage, loath to note that the kitten is still blind. When a youth toys with the soul of his comrade, the spectators marvel at his daring, not seeing the shackles binding the wretched soul. When a man denounces an assembly of judges, the witnesses admire his courage, not knowing that the daring of his threat has been bought 
with a jingle of gold. When an aged man comforts himself by deriding death, his friends delight, unmindful that fear has fashioned his mask of derision. True daring is often unnoticed by people because, in its essence, it is unusual, but the heart will tremble in response to the unusual. Where art thou who vanquished? Where art thou who transformed the tremor into a leap toward the light? Here, thou who darest, in the deep of night, I shall draw near to bless thy sandals. I shall strew thy pillow with sparks of light, for the sleep of the daring one is as the melting away of a lute, when the seven strings are bathed in mystery. The sleep of the daring one is as the calm before the whirlwind, when even the slenderest blades of grass are unstirred. Does the roar of the lion set the world to tremble? No! Daring is awakened and the royal lotus of spirit unfolds. Brothers, let us gather in the hall of joy. The flower has unfolded, raised is the great wheel. Our joy descends to the netherworlds and rises to the brothers in the super mundane. We sing to daring our best song. The chirping of birds has disturbed the moment of rest. Why in the early hours are the birds so tense in their striving? They dare, overhearing the praise to daring, but no one informed them that their usual song would not increase their daring. The darkness shrieks, deafening in its banality. Darkness cannot withstand the daring of light. When the scales of the Lord have been prepared, we shall awaken early in order to weigh our use of the day just past. We shall select that which was most daring in order that these kernels of good may weigh more in the balance. We shall add the sorrows of the old world, for their burden is of use to us, and add the derision of the ignorant. Each of these adds its weight to the cup holding truth. Should we find threats and assaults, let us not forget to add those to the cup also. Why the trembling of the scale? With what wretched murky tatters have we filled the cup of our wrongdoing? Like last winter's withered leaves, I heap the curses of the ordinary, the dross of yesterday. Victory to you, daring deeds, for the mighty winged deeds outweigh all wrongdoing. Lord, grant me to cast into the flames the deceptive rags of the ordinary. I shall not err in realizing that winged daring has thy blessing. In the sacred furnace will I forge the wings of Alea, daring, brave. I know nothing of complaints, cruelty, or aught that could weigh down my new wings. New will be my song. Broadly has spread the praise of daring. The least of the disciples have turned to the path of searching and have approached us, asking that we judge their striving. Each brought his dreams. I will destroy all earthly temples, because truth needs no walls. I will water all deserts, I will open all prisons, I will demolish all swords, I will blaze all trails, I will wipe away all tears, I will travel through all lands, I will inscribe the book of humanity. But the least one of them turned to the shining stars and said, Hail to you, brothers! And in this salutation of daring, his ego vanished. Let the path of the universe be acknowledged in this daring greeting. The book of Thomas a Kempis, The Imitation of Christ, has long been appreciated in the East, not only by virtue of its content, but because of the meaning of its title. In the midst of medieval idolatry of Christ, the voice of Thomas a Kempis resounded in protest. From behind the walls of a Catholic monastery rang out a voice to clarify the image of the great teacher. The very word imitation comprises a vital action. The formula, imitation of Christ, is an achievement of daring innate in the conscious spirit that accepts all responsibility of creation. Truly, the conscious pupil dares to approach the teacher in imitation. Such an example brought light into the musty darkness 
and behind the monastic walls provided the impetus to strive toward creative daring. In accordance with the groveling medieval consciousness, it would have been fitting to say, the worship of Christ. But the ascendant spirit dared to pronounce a call to imitation. Each step of blessed daring must be cherished as a milestone in the progress of humanity. We do not give attention to monastic utterances. Thomas had no need to climb to the stake. His task was to proclaim not the forbidden, but the inspiring formula. There are two forms of truth. One must be nurtured by the flame of the stake. The other demands spreading without restraint. It is difficult to state which method is the more painful to pursue. Sometimes it is easier to suffer the pain of the stake than to witness the distortion of the disseminated teaching. In either event, blessed be the daring that penetrates the darkness. The world has lost its happiness because happiness is in the spirit. Those who have turned away from the spirit must endure unhappiness, because why else would they return to the spirit? Therein lies the meaning of great events. In peril which attracts danger is the poison resulting from irritability. This poison, a quite substantial one, is deposited against the walls of the nerve channels and then spreads through the entire organism. If modern science would try to examine objectively the nerve channels giving heed to the astral currents, it would encounter a strange decomposition of the astral substance during the passage of that substance through the nerve channels. This is a reaction to imperil. Only rest can help the nervous system to overcome the dangerous enemy that can call forth the most diverse irritations and painful contractions of the organism. He who is afflicted with imperil must repeat how beautiful everything is, and he will be right, because the flow of evolution follows immutable law. It is beautiful. The more refined the nervous system, the more painful is the deposit of imperil. This same poison, by the addition of one ingredient, may contribute to the decomposition of matter. Of no great merit are those who cannot distinguish the swallow from the vulture, but of what merit are those who believe that by plucking the eagle's wing they can turn it into a helpless duck? Beware of hypocrites, especially those immersed in greed, those cunning ones who stir their spiritual stew. The manifestation of the inviolability of the world's laws flashes like a sword. There is no spot for the hypocrite to lay his head. The teacher who has not assimilated the indications of the teaching is like a donkey under a too heavy load of grain. Great is the turmoil in the world. A blow against the teaching acts as a boomerang smiting the inflictor. The air is alive with arrows. Dry away the sweat caused by the enemy's attack. At the time of assault, I shall speak of matters eternal. Let us rejoice because opportunities are multiplied. I know that in each hostile heart sprouts a useful seed. For more information and more of the Agni Yoga Society books, please visit agniyoga.org. Gallant viewers, we appreciate your company for today's words of wisdom. Coming up next is Mount Everest, the goddess, mother of the world. Part 1 of 2, right after Noteworthy News. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television for more uplifting programming. May you acquire precious insights in your inner contemplation while in God's gracious protection. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com forward slash WOW.